All right, so my name's Colin, and uh, with me today is Taryn Lizgub. I'm with Objective Reality Games, CEO and founder. Taryn Lizgub, CEO and founder of Knox Lab. And um, <clears throat> today we'd like to present to you the project we've been working on over the past six or seven months, and that's our virtual classroom. Uh, we all know that remote learning isn't going away, and many of my friends are educators, and we started our work out of what we perceived as necessity. Um, through our interviews and surveys with about 2,500 educators and administrators, we were able to build our concept around four fundamental elements. Uh, starting out, we wanted to virtually bring the student back into the classroom. Our research has shown that having the ability to separate the home environment from the school environment puts the student in a better mindset for learning. Even if you're just sitting at your kitchen table, being able to get into the VR headset and, and physically separate yourself from that home environment will just get you a uh, state for learning. Um, also, many of our teachers have reported back to us saying that the current e-based learning offers little to no accountability, uh, meaning that there's not really any way of knowing if a student is Googling the answers to tests, for instance. And then along with that, many of the platforms don't offer any attendance tracking, nor do they offer any real way for the at-home student to engage in lectures and workshops. But uh, most importantly, from, from a de developmental standpoint, the current platforms offer nothing in the way of social development, uh, which through our research, again, we've found to be fundamental in the growth and overall well-being of the student. So what have we learned through beta testing? Um, the students were more engaged in material. Test taking in VR offers better safeguards against cheating meaning that we can use the sensors already in the HMD display to notify a teacher if a student were to remove the headset during a test or assignment. Um, we were also able to test that our system is adaptable and can work with any e-based learning platform. And this is important because our goal is not to replace what the teachers and students are familiar with and comfortable using. We just want the virtual classroom to be an enhancement to the experience of the at-home student. Uh, we were able to see that the students can engage with, with each other in the virtual space. Uh, at one point during testing and some downtime, the kids were actually playing hide and seek with, with one another uh, in the VR space, and that was, that was pretty cool to see. And something that I already know as a game developer um, is that anything we can do to gamify education will translate better for the student. Uh, it's a proven format the students know and respond to and, and will retain information better. Unfortunately, our students and administrators couldn't be with us today because we're doing this during school hours, but um, we were lucky enough to have NBC News affiliate 10 TV here in Ohio run a piece on, on um, our testing so far. And I'd like to share a few clips here to explain from the students and administrators perspective. First, we have some feedback from the students here. We were in a room in space. The possibilities are literally endless. I feel like the, the virtual reality will keep me because it's fun, honestly. Like just being in there was fun. We were in a and next here we've got Laura Corcoran. She's the principal and educator at uh, Bishop Flaget School here in Chillicothe, Ohio. And uh, that's the school where we've been doing all of our beta testing so far. The idea is already gaining fans at the Bishop Flaget School after a recent test run. Anything that can make that more realistic um, for the kids is going is to make a difference in virtual education. So instead of I'm sitting um, at the kitchen table at my house where there are a million things around me that might distract me, um, I'm not seeing any of that because I'm in the virtual classroom. We don't know when the next pandemic is going to hit. And I would hope that in the event that something like this happens again, we are more prepared and ready to move forward. And moving forward may just mean strapping on some goggles and letting our imagination take the lead. Brittany Bailey, 10 TV News. It's fun. All right. So where do we go from here? 
um, we see the university level student benefiting tremendously from this kind of technology, just given that so many college students choose to learn remotely. So this can be a great way to offer a better experience for those students. Uh, so moving forward, we'd like to bring on university partners soon. So if there's any college administrators uh, in the audience, feel free to reach out. And um, we also want to keep innovating and working on our anti-cheating technologies with, with the overall goal being that we want the virtual platform uh, to be accepted as a legitimate way to take tests securely. And along with that, we want to understand the rules and guidelines better for certification um, and work with the state and federal boards to tailor our labs and experiences to meet the requirements that are currently only accepted as in person. Last I checked, for instance, uh, law school has mandatory sets of hours that a student must be in person. Medical school, very similar. And then uh, even in the high school level, there are some labs and things that uh, smaller schools cannot provide due to regulation restrictions. And being able to offer those in VR could open up possibilities for students in underprivileged communities or, or schools that, that can't meet those regulations to, uh, to offer um, a better learning experience for their students. So in general, we just want to spread the awareness and adaptation of VR and education because as developers, uh, Taryn and I know how adaptive and immersive VR is, as I'm sure everyone in the audience is aware. Uh, and then, you know, with the Quest 2 and the increase in internet connectivity, uh, people can really start to, um, can really start to, to, get together in a real way in VR, and that's within our grasp, and it's up to people like us to really push that forward. So now we'll move on to the, the technology. Uh, Taryn here with Knox Lab, we, we met kind of uh, through the game design world, and um, you know, about seven months ago, we decided that we were gonna start taking on the idea of creating this VR classroom. And he had already been working on, on what he calls Knock Knock, which is a VR meeting software. And rather than starting from the ground up, he already had a, a really solid uh, meeting platform. And we've just been able to work together and through our partnership, uh, integrate it in a way that um, is working really well for the virtual classroom. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and kick it off to Taryn here and you can get a little more into the technology behind everything. Hey guys, uh, I'm Donald, um, uh, founder at Knox Labs and Colin. Um, it was awesome. Um, okay, uh, I'll dive in a little. Um, so we, we've been in the VR space since 2014, uh, early on like manufacturing Google Cardboards and then got into uh, developing a platform for um, any front-end developer to build virtual reality applications. So we wanted to dem democratize the space um, and make it easier for anyone not knowing any 3D uh, to be able to uh, make uh, VR and a AR applications. Um, so we initially built a JavaScript-based platform that would allow uh, anyone with little or no code to, to build. Uh, but later on, we realized that uh, it's, it's, it's spanning too, too, too much and it had, we have to concentrate on well, one, one, one area. Um, and uh, the COVID came around March and um, it uh, accelerated the, the direction towards uh, choosing one, one, one a single area of, of concentration, uh, which was uh, um, meetings. Um, so I'll, I'll show you a little of what we uh, have. Uh, sharing. So, uh, you can, so we've tailored this, uh, it's a general meeting uh, place, but we've tailored this towards uh, education with Colin. Um, so the, to get to the meeting as quickly as possible from your regular uh, Zoom uh, meeting. 
or any 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 other uh, software you're using. So concentration here is uh, speed uh, to, to meeting. So uh, with one click to be able to uh, go from uh, non VR to full VR environment and. Uh, concentration is on also on very intuitive uh, uh, usage, uh, so it's it's very heavily based on um, the, you using gestures and uh, swing uh, your hands. So you can change like um, and and concentration on a natural way of you would how you would act in a classroom or just you're, uh, you have a chalk, you're using the blackboard. Um, I'll fast forward a little. See so the eraser. Uh, there's a browser you can span. Mm. So sharing is super easy. Uh, you just uh, push your browser into the uh, screen and you start sharing whatever um, you're doing. And we've created our own keyboard, uh, which is we use as drumsticks and it's uh, much faster than the default uh, Oculus keyboard or uh, the default keyboards in VR. Uh, and we've also made it fun where you can share ideas um, just simply like using a pixel wall. And here you can play games like battleships as well. Um, I'll fast forward. There's text recognition. So uh, whatever you uh, write on the Blackboard will be saved and uh, passed on to Google Docs later on. Um, here you can insert uh, the text into the browser to search. Yeah, fast forward and yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, con concentration uh, for, for the future is uh, on uh, super easy to, to use. So, it will, we will be concentrating on uh, hands and using hand, hand tracking. Uh, and later on, um, we we're also experimenting with um, non invasive technologies um, and, and neural uh, bracelets. Um, with which we're hoping to derive a uh, language that's uh, personal to you, and then from that, uh, deriving a language that's uh, uh, a, a universal uh, human language in, in VR. Uh, so it's, it's super exciting, and uh, yeah, I, it's almost over. So awesome. Yeah, thanks, Thank sir. Yeah, and, and Stephanie makes a good point, you know, maybe, you know, testing doesn't have to be the way it is now. Um, and that's definitely something to tackle. I think I think the at home learning has taught us more about how we have to change the way we educate uh, than anything. But, um, you know, trying to work within those constraints, the teachers that we've we've uh, surveyed, like I said, we've we've talked to about twenty five hundred. Uh, administrators and teachers and and over and over again it was how do we know that the students are active in the lectures how do we know if um, if they're engaged in taking the tests and and things like that so so we came into this trying to tackle those issues that the students um, and the teachers were struggling with um, but you're right you know maybe it's just that we need to rethink how we how we test you know students. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that was that's our time, right? But we'll we'll open up for question and answer if anybody wants to ask us any questions. You know, the the main thing we wanted to convey through this was that uh, we're trying to create a platform that's not a replacement for e-based learning. It's just an enhancement of 
what's out there and a way to experience class at home um, in a way that can kind of bring you back in and make you feel like you're a part of, of the, the experience again. So.